We left off on page 155. Also, little sandal. Literally, you're not permitted to wear a sandal. You see? O middle shalor. Or a shoe made of leather. Leather is the key. A shoe has to be made of leather. It's machlok shushonim. This is a question of shushonim. A shoe made means anything which protects the foot. A sock is when you walk, you could feel the ground. But a, a shoe protects the, the foot that you don't feel the ground. Everybody agrees a sock you're permitted to wear. <coughs> but something which offers protection is a question that's a shoe. Well, no, maybe shoes only it's made of leather, like regarding uh, chalitza. It's made of another material that's not valid. It has to be made of leather. Afilu kav hakitei Here, A person that has a peg leg and it's covered with kav uh, it, it, and it's covered with leather. Afilu shel eitzim chup or somebody just called me about this, Erevim Kipper. It's made of wood, but it has, so the shoe itself is made of wood, but it has a, le- a leather covering. Even if the covering's on the outside of the shoe, not the inside of the shoe person called me, he has a pair of Crocs. They're made of p- plastic or rubber, whatever they're made of. And there's like, an, on the outer part of the thing, there's like a leather rim. So in terms of the comfort of the shoe, has nothing, the, the Croc, it has nothing to do with it. Is he permitted to wear it on, uh, on Yom Kippur? Right? He's, no, he shouldn't. Don't, shouldn't wear it. Sometimes you have these, yeah. these sneakers. It's man on, on the edge. You know, the trim, the trim is a, tri- a leather trim. You're not permitted to wear it even though it has nothing to do with the comfort of the shoe. But because he has leather, it takes on another status. No, it's not a problem. It's not Marasai. Today, today nothing's Marasai because everything is false. You know, that's it. Okay. Also, Avo shall gomi, gemi o shall kash, if it's made of some resinous materials, or it's made of straw. Or oh, shall beg it, it's made of cloth. Or oh, shall sharp medium, other type of materials. Mutter. You're permitted to wear it even in the public domain. You have to understand what it means, even Shusarabim. What's the Chiddush? I mean, we'll see. I mean, there's like on Tisha B'Av, the hell, you're not permitted to wear shoes. But let's say you have to walk in the street and you're going to actually hurt your feet. If you lacerate your feet unless you put on your shoe. And the only shoe you have available is a leather shoe. You're permitted to wear the shoe, even though it's leather. You're permitted. Umuta lamar al karvi kisoso shelor. Person is in shul, and he wants to stand. You know, just to cushion his, his to make his day that it shouldn't be so wearing. And he wants to stand on a leather pillow, pillow that's covered with a leather covering. Mm-hmm. It's not a problem. Umikol moko machmit over the brocha, but it's best to be machmir. The question is going on back on the, uh, we'll see, on any type of shoe, or it's going back on the Karim Vikisosos. Machmatova of Rocha. Let's see, Beis, Shalor, Atar Vayakoy. But it says, made of leather, it's not only the, the minnow is a shoe, but it's even going back on the sandal. The sandal is made of leather. El Sandal Hu Shalor Koshe, U Minu Hu Shal Shorach. What's the between a sandal and, and a shoe? A sandal, the leather is very hard. Right? Sandal. And a shoe, it's softer. Even though the sole is no, but talking about the upper part. So it's when, in, when the, who was it? No, the straps that go around. You know, when, when Bush was in, where was in Iraq, they threw the shoe at him. I think they threw a sandal at him. Shoe was too soft. Okay. Kavakitea. What about a peg leg? She nicked a caraglo, a person's an amputee, osin to me the fus regal, so they make a prosthesis. Say they use metal or titanium. One time they would, it would made of leather. The Yeshba base kibul, or, Mar Shabbos speaks about this. Question of the person is permitted to go with a peg leg on Shabbos with this type of thing, because what happens if it, it detaches itself? He may pick it up and, and it, transport it. The Alam Shusarabim is called, maybe, well, maybe it's called carrying. Same thing, it's made of wood, it's coated with leather. So this has to, this, this is similar to what we discussed yesterday. I don't want to distract Ernie from davening chakras. But if you have a leather, uh, a leather uh, insert in your shoe, right, orthotic. 
So the shoe is made, you have a sneaker or some man-made fire, you want to put a leather orthotic in. Are you permitted? It's an insert. No, 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 not carry. it's not carry. You wear permitted to wear orthotics on Shabbos. Right? It's part of the shoe. But, but it's quite on, but on, but on Yom Kippur because it's made of leather. Maybe you, you seemingly you would have been permitted. Would that be part of, like, it's, oh, it's, it has no function outside the shoe itself. Right? Its function is being part of the shoe. No, no, no. It's not like standing on a pillow. This is part of the function of, of the shoe. The shoe does... Yeah, but, but it's not, comp not not for you. It doesn't function. It doesn't function for you. No, no, no. Are you permitted? It's called wearing. Right? If a person would attach a pillow to his foot and walk in Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos, is he in violation of transporting? The answer is no. Why? Because it's kalachayad. Only because that's unconventional carrying. But it's not called, he's not wearing the pillow. Right? He has a pillow attached to his foot. But when you have an insert in your shoe, the orthotic, you're wearing, you're wearing the orthotic. It's not called, you're carrying the orthotic. Because one, it's made to function together with the shoe. And the shoe is, the, is, is a garment. So this is part of that, that, that level of accommodation. Yeah, it's, it's only in shoes. Shoes. The peg leg is your shoe. That is the shoe. Right? What is it serving as? You should be able to walk. So therefore what? A person has, uh, has elevated heels. A person's only four and a half feet tall. He wears elevated heels to look a little taller. It's permitted. Wear it. It's a little bit longer, so it's a, it's a prosthesis. Forget about, what, forget about the person who's crippled. The amputee, what a person, he, he doesn't have shoes. He can't walk in the street unless he puts on his leather shoes. Is he permitted to put, put them on and go to shul? Gets the shul, he should take them off. We'll see. That, that's from Satishaba for sure. It says explicitly he's permitted to wear leather shoes if he has no other way, means of walking in the street. You know, there he speaks about a kiss in Shabra, maybe the Ramah. What about if they'll make a mockery of you? If you walk barefoot in the street, they'll make a mockery of you because you live among Goyim. You're permitted to wear shoes, leather shoes in the street. And then when you get to the Jewish quarter, you take off the leather shoes. Remember many years ago, there was a certain Jew... I heard this from David Finkelstein of Shalom. And he had Psycho Nilo. He was wearing, he went up to the Oran Kodesh with leather shoes. Nobody said a word because whatever he was, I'm not going to mention who he was. He was, he was a, no, Chas Vishal, Rav Kutovsky was a Tzadik. This, this was Leonard Bernstein. Leonard, Ber Leonard Bernstein. He had no, no relevance to Yiddishkeit whatsoever. Whatsoever. What? Whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. So David Finkelstein told me at the time, he was a tzaddik, he was the shamus, the founding shamus of, of the shul, that there was even a question, there were times, where he wore a crucifix. That's how confused he was about who he was. Okay. Definitely. Why? The only shoes. No. Why, did, why aren't you permitted to wear a leather shoe? Because you have to be afflicted. Right? You have to be afflicted. A mourner, a person shiv, he's not permitted to wear leather shoes. He's permitted to wear a leather belt. Same idea. I mean, if you want to get to the ph philosophical level, right, which we once mentioned, as I mentioned, the chalitza shoe has to be made of leather. It's made of any other material. It's not valid. So there's a famous malvin, which I always mention there. It's a, it's a good thing to know. The Gemara says in Shabbos, Rabbi Yochanan says that if a person, if he has to sell all his possessions, his belongings, to buy a pair of leather shoes, he should. He should. That's how important is to wear a leather shoe leather shoes and he, he and also 
the um, the widow of the surviving of the brother who passed away, when the surviving brother does, is not interested in marrying her, she takes off his shoe. He spits. She spits in his presence, and she says the man refuses to perform the marriage. That's her statement, a declaration of presence at a bezdin. What is the significance? He said. He explains it this way. What does leather represent? The hide. Leather represents the animal. The question is, what is a human being? Is a human being an intellectual animal? Or is a human being an exalted being, a spiritual being who happens to be infused in a, in a human body? If that is the case, the world was created, including the animal, accommod to accommodate his needs. So, when you wear a leather shoe, it's you trampling on the animal. I have a right to step on the animal, to kill the animal for my need. So you can't be destructive, but as long as it has value, you have a right. So it's a demonstration of dominance, the human being being the center of the universe, dominating the material. This is, this is so, when she removes the shoe, what is, what, is, what, is, what is the symbolism? Normally, a brother marrying a sister-in-law, even a widow, when he's not permitted, it's incest. What is the child? Child's a mamzer. In the context of Yibum, not only is it not a, a provision, it's a mitzvah, and the child's a legitimate child. Kosher Jew. Kosher Baruch says, for the sake of perpetuating the deceased, I'm willing to turn the world upside down. To permit something that's not normally not. To legitimize something which is normally not legitimate. And you're telling me, you have no interest in marrying your sister-in-law for the sake of perpetuating your brother. Kurdish Bible says, you know something? You have no right to demonstrate your prowess over the animal. Your dominance. Take off the shoe. He's no better than the animal. That's the symbolism of removing the shoe. So what is shoe? A person is in a state of mourning. What, what is that? It's a time he has to be humbled. He has to reflect. Takes off his shoe. He gives up his whole sense of who am I? to be able to come upon many things. That's why an oval doesn't wear shoes, leather shoes. To wear man made fires can be more comfortable than a leather shoe, it doesn't make a difference. It's what the shoe represents. It's the stepping on it. So Yom Kippur also, these are afflictions. I deny myself that. It's not only a comfort issue, it's what, what, what the shoe represents. The belt doesn't represent that. You're not stepping on it. This is like trampling on it. So what is that? There? Therefore, what? No, but the, the whole idea is trampling. You know, you trample on something. We're holding up your trousers with a, with a leather belt. It's, it, it doesn't show that. You're using it, but it's not trampling. That, so that's what Rabbi Yochan means. To be able to, to make your statement, to identify who you are, you should, you should buy a pair of shoes. Who are you? The animal is only there for me to use, to accommodate my needs. What? Loves. Loves would not be. No, because that's called, that's part of the, it represents, it's part of the shoe. It's part of the shoe. That's what it is. Because the, there's other reasons why you shouldn't wear leather. Of course, in terms of the impact on concrete, say, if you, if you live in the jungle, like in Africa, you can go wear leather shoes because the ground is soft. There's no, there's no concrete pavement. But they say that, you know, the foot pounding the pavement over many years eventually wears away many things there, and eventually it actually damages the foot. So therefore, health-wise, it's better to wear a, a rubber surface. The cushioning. It's for the cushioning. Not because it wears away. Not because it wears... Look. I didn't realize people that frugal today. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now, now, now you know why David's companies make money. Okay. Abel shall get me.
seemingly they're the same. They're the same. They're the same. Even though I mentioned, even though I mentioned to you that over there, if it's a question of you have to go in Rosh Hashanah, you're permitted to wear leather shoe. And here he says, no, I'm just saying, yeah. Because here this question may be a Doraisa. There it's Avelus. Yom Kippur is not Avelus. Right? Tisham of the reason why you don't wear shoes, it's, 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 it's Avelus. Yom Kippur has no relevance to, to, uh, to being in a state of mourning. You're not grieving over anything. It's a machlos you show them. It's a machlos you show them. There's no kores, kores not, but there's a question maybe in Issa or Raisa. That's chatzitza. That's chatzitza. He's not even permitted to officiate in the sock. No, but not that. What about going in the harabayis? No Jew is permitted to wear shoes on the harabayis. Why? Because again, you, who, who do you think you are? You don't wear a, a money belt, right? Who do you think you are? In the presence of Hashem, you demonstrate nothing. I don't know what people do there.